Hello, I'm Dr. R.J. Linner, here to talk to you about cam liners. I think we're in for some fun today. I love working with first timers. It reminds me of my own college days, when I discovered the magic of can liners for the very first time. Now, there's a lot of information here, and I'll be throwing quite a few scientific terms at you. So buckle up. I'd like to guide you through the process of choosing the right liner for your needs. So what are we working with? The basic raw material we use in liner manufacturing is called resin. Two types of polyethylene molecules give us the choice between two types of bags. High density and linear low density. High density liners are great if you're looking for an economical choice for heavy, soft, or wet refuse like leaves or food waste. They're puncture resistant and have superior vapor and moisture protection, which have gained them USDA and FDA approval for use with food. Linear load density, on the other hand, doesn't tear easily, so it's a good choice for waste with sharp or jagged edges, such as rough yard trimmings or plastic utensils. It has incredible stretching capabilities, which makes linear low density a fantastic multi-purpose liner. There are also reprocessed polyethylene liners that are made from recycled post-consumer plastics like milk jugs and other material scraps. These are blended with other resins to create brand new liners that promote environmental sustainability and help keep costs low. Choosing the right material is only one part of determining your appropriate liner. You'll also want to consider the liner's thickness, or gauge. For example, if you're throwing away some office trash, you can use a lighter gauge. But if you're throwing away something like industrial waste, you want to use a heavier gauge to support that extra weight. Linear low density liners are measured in units called mils, while high density liners are measured in microns. Linear low density liners have a gauge between 35 hundredths of a mil for small bags and four mils for the large ones. High density liners range from six microns for the smaller bags and 24 for the larger ones. You can determine the appropriate size of your liner by taking a few simple measurements. First find the circumference of your receptacle. If you're using a circular container, you can find the circumference by taking the diameter and multiplying it by pi, or 3.14. If your container is square, simply add the sum of all four sides. Then determine the length of your liner by taking the height of the can and adding five inches. Pretty easy, right? Another feature to consider when picking out a liner is its type of seal. The seal is what holds the bottom of the liner together. The most basic type of seal is a flat seal, which is a straight seal along the liner's bottom edge. These are somewhat leak-proof, but they conform poorly to the shape of a container. A gusseted seal is formed when both sides are tucked in to form gussets. These seals are rarely used, as they tend to leak with wet contents. The most common type of seal is the star seal. They're created by folding the bottom of the liner over several times and then sealing it. Beautiful. This virtually eliminates leaks and allows the liner to conform to almost all types of containers. 